Hello viewers, Marianne from Revealing Light Tarot. How are we all today? Wherever you are in the world when you're watching, a huge shout out to you. I want to look at uh, post-COVID, what the world looks like post-COVID, uh, COVID-19. Um, are we going to return to normal? Um, people have asked me when that might be. I don't really have an answer for you other than to say, uh, you know, next year is a new year. Uh, and as, as more and more countries get reach a, uh, a vaccination their vaccination targets then of course we have um, an optimism that we can get back to normal now I uh, also want to say for anyone who's going to post something that you know you're um, you're targeting anti-vaxxers I'm not absolutely I'm not conscientious uh, objection object objectors um, you're welcome here any day uh, there are people who have um, made decisions from very young ages around what they will and won't put in their body. They live naturally. They do things um, in the rhythm uh, of, of nature. They access natural medicines, homeopathic medicines. Uh, they come from a place of nutrition and holistic medicine um, and they conscientiously object. That's fine. The people that I'm talking to, are the uh, hoaxes that would rather uh, take ex experimental um, uh, regimes uh, than have a vaccination uh, that really, let's face it, um, people say they're new. Well, it's been given full approval by the FDA. Uh, the vaccine I had, AstraZeneca, is based on the flu shot. We've been giving people the flu shot for decades. Um, even mRNA uh, technology has been around. They've been working on that for uh, around a decade, as I understand it. So um, people who think that the virus isn't real, that people won't get hurt or killed, or this is all a media beat up, you know, there are bad things, chips, etc. I don't need to address the tinfoil brigade. But those people, you know, you and I just don't have much in common. Okay, so at least on this subject, so um, I don't need to hear from you. All right, so um, I want to look at post-COVID. I received an email from Lena Rodriguez this morning, had a beautiful quote um, around uh, a, a woman, I think she was a writer, talking about the that we don't want to go back to the normal that we had, that the virus won't make that possible. Hence, it's hard to say when this when this pandemic will end because until we get everybody vaccinated, you know, then that's not the end of the pandemic, is it? I had uh, my second AstraZeneca shot yesterday, um, and uh, and I was fine. I've now got full. Well, in two weeks or so, I'll have full protection. Um, but I also understand I'll probably have to be wearing a mask for a long time yet. Um, okay, the rainmaker just dropped out. The rainmaker cleansing and healing starting things anew after rain you have that beautiful cleanness that sweeps the land it's like when the rivers get clogged up uh, nature turns on a well turns on the rain to bring forward that that clearing out um so uh and you know there's a metaphor there with our emotions there's a metaphor with our emotions okay Show me what we need to know today. Messages, please, overarching uh, energies here. For those that are going, you know, what are wondering what, what's going to happen. Is this ever going to end? Are we ever going to get our freedoms back? Is the politics behind health ever going to go? Or are we going to be at war like this forever and ever? <laughs> um, no, we're not. Okay, so... Overarching images, please. So I've got magic. That's interesting. Magic. I do feel um, the new moon energy uh, in Virgo. And uh, it, Virgo brings forward uh, not only service to others, but a, uh, a desire and a, and a willingness to roll the sleeves up and get the work done. Uh, 33, this is communication. So... Again, you know, most of my readings, you know, for people who are feeling battle weary, it's about taking your head out of the, the you know, the really um, 
I would just say crappy kind of social media channels and uh, and watching your own responses as well. I've certainly been guilty uh, at times where I, I, I've got an anger or a resentment towards something and I'll get on social media and I'll post a few rude uh, or cutting comments and I'll go, hang on a minute. And then the trolls descend because that's the energy that they love. And then I go, oh, no, I, I don't want to do that. And so I stay off it. Um, the magic, uh, cleansing, what are we cleansing? What's clogged up? Um in our systems, in our communications, because 33 is a master communication number. Um, the corn, number 10, finishing cycles, of course, numerology uh, wise, but the corn is also about abundance. It's sort of like the Empress card, something coming to harvest. Um, the reaping of the corn as well. So these cards are pretty positive around cycles uh, and things getting better. Um, within a cycle of time and we all know that innately we all know that but I've also got the curse there I'm just being uh, really drawn to the moons here the moon uh, and the earth or other planets um, the curse we asked about COVID and you can see that moon there full full uh, behind this person's head full in its magic um, it's shining on uh, illuminating that abundance there in that card but then we look at the curse then we look at the curse card uh, and we've got the moon here and a hand over someone's mouth um, in a way the reason that this virus is bringing out the worst in us is because um, the worst needs to be needs to be seen needs to be experienced we're almost witnesses witnesses to all of this and we'll make our decisions. Each one of us will make our decisions about how we live our lives. We've got the child. Um, I think if we don't get serious about making those vaccinations available around the world, this, this virus is now targeting children. And this will be the particularly bitter lesson for those um, that don't believe it's it can do any harm, that think it's just mild, um, you know, turning their back on on what's being offered. Um, again, unless we're all in, unless we all come together, then it will keep it will keep coming. And I've got the ch the child here. That's a lesson. That's a lesson for us. And we've got the spiral. Number fifty change. Uh, and also getting caught in that uh, in that funnel, if you like. There's so much that's got to change here. The hunter, you know, the predatory behaviour in a way, and pre you know, predatory behaviour comes in all all shapes and sizes. It doesn't just be. It doesn't just include aggressiveness. It can include everything it can you know the defensiveness that you put onto others you know whenever you're pushing your energy onto somebody else whenever you're intruding in any way um and people aren't willingly asking for that or aren't willingly seeking that out uh, and whenever you're increasing the burdens that people carry there's uh there's an issue there's a problem this is about us we're learning about us. This virus is teaching uh, about us. And of course, I've got the our card. And uh, again, the our card is behind, uh, the, the moon is behind, or this shape is behind the our. It is about energy. It is about energy here. It's about getting of wisdom. Um Yesterday, uh, after I'd had my shot, I did some meditation and some Reiki healing on myself um, because I've always managed to combine orthodox and natural healing methods together and, uh, and one amplifies the other um, at two, with a lot of success. We've got water energy here again, these shapes, the emotions the cleansing, the water cleansing, and the middle world, which is our world. We are completing, and this comes, uh, these cards, same cards are coming up for a reading that I did recently, the standstill, um, having to look at things, having to look at what we've 
you know, what what have we sown? What are we reaping? Um, and part of this quote that Lena sent me talked about um, after the Spanish flu pandemic, the world was not did not return to how it was before. There were it just couldn't because the lessons were so so deep and so stark, and um, it gave birth to a lot of innovation. A lot of innovation. You know, one of the lessons here is about tolerance also. Um, again, not, you know, allowing conscientious objection to go forward, not making a judgment there, uh, understanding. Um, you can look on at the hoaxes and be uh, sympathetic and leave an open heart for them and wish them well, because guess what? They're going to need it, the hoaxes. They're going to need it. Because they're not doing anything, anything to protect themselves because they don't feel they have to. Okay, so, um, and that energy that they're in, that spiralling energy, spiralling, it's, it's negative, it's aggressive, it's negative, it's political, it's divisive. So um, how we're reacting on and responding is important to our health. Okay, so I'm just going to ask, I'm going to pull from my Wheel of the Year Something about all these circles today, spirals uh, of energy. I'm just going to pull, uh, what does life look like post-COVID? Let's just have a look at what life looks like. What does life look like post-COVID? I'm uh, getting, yes, the triangle, but uh, the tops of the triangles are going in different directions. There is, and one direction is kind of, moving in that kind of arc. I think um, most definitely uh, the natural evolution here is that we probably won't listen or absorb. You know, once people have made, made a choice, they've made a choice. We don't need to convince them. We don't need to judge that choice. Um, it seems like there's like a, a fairly distinct splitting off here. And this is why I don't think that the politicians who are promoting uh, dangerous um, actions around in a pandemic are going to prosper politically. And this could be a reason why Trump did what he did. Maybe he's seen that writing on the wall because of the children, because of the children. OK, so what does life look like then after? Where does this other trajectory go? Not the trajectory that breaks off, but where does this other trajectory go? What does life look like post-COVID? Where does this other trajectory, this tolerant trajectory, this apolitical trajectory, where does this go to? What does life look like post-COVID? All right, let's see what... The universe is going to bring forth. So we've got the two of pentacles. Definitely uh, twos are all about um, decisions um, and making, having to make a decision. So this is sort of following on from what I was saying. Crossing that is the knight of wands. So movement forward. I'll just bring the laptop down. Movement forward. Uh, and again, somebody has found a passion. Somebody is motivated here uh, to... To really uh, take things forward, uh, let's see what they're, they're taking forward. The Knight of Cups, the more we extend this uh, loving energy here, um, and I, I, you know, I go to the health workers that deal every day with, you know, people who uh, think the virus is a hoax or, uh, you know, this is about extending that helping hand. Um, and I think those that do that, are well placed, are really well placed energetically as well. Um, suspending judgments, I think, is a, is really important. The nine of uh, cups, it's almost like, you know, in some way, some part of our conscious uh, wished for this. And, and, you know, that's a terrible thing to say because that's in the past. Um, but it's, it's about miracles as well. You know, we're seeing... In the worst of adversity, we see the biggest, the biggest of miracles, the biggest of mobilizations. Um, and I don't want to get too much into what's going on in Afghan Afghanistan because that 
that just, you know, I'm heart sick about that for a lot of reasons. Uh, but one thing that I am looking at is the amount of people moving mountains to, to literally save people who would be in the path of the Taliban retribution um, for working with um, allied forces in Afghanistan. Uh, we're, we're seeing a lot right now. We're seeing a lot, and that's why it's so hard, uh, because we are, we've got the seven of swords here, in, what is crossing us. What is, what is really blatantly obvious is the lies. Um, it's like listening to a huckster now on a street corner, pedal a lot of nonsense. A lot of people are turning away from it. A lot of people aren't buying into it anymore. And this is, of course, part of that cleansing, part of that unclogging. Um, the Two of Swords, yeah, I'm not surprised to see twos here. This is this splitting off, as I said, uh, the trajectory. Where is tra the trajectory going? We all have to make decisions. That's the long and the short of it. We've all got to make decisions in this pandemic. It's not... Uh, and, that, and that again is vaccination or if you're conscientiously objecting to keep safe social distance keep out of uh, keep out of the path of the pandemic um, build up your immunity all of those things uh, but it's also for the I'm just going to call them the hoaxes <laughs> they also have to make heavy decisions as well so in a way uh, this time that we live in you know, is really about making choices and also choices to help others as well because that is the foundation of the reading, how we do that. In what ways do we do that? It's like we all know. I know we know. I know we know what to do. The here and now we've got the death card, the Grim Reaper card the ending of something as well or as death. And there's nothing that teaches us more than an ending. Than a death. The environment around is the Eight of Pentacles. This is this Virgo energy that I absolutely love because I have a stellium. In Sagittarius in the sixth house, which is ruled by Virgo. This is about rolling your sleeves up and doing the work that needs to be done without an urgency and with an urgency. But to me, it's like quality is really going to count in the future because we have to digest. We have to digest the death um, and we have to make sense of it. And so there's work to be done to bring forward that owl, the, owl, the wisdom of the owl, one way or another. In the hopes and fears, we've got the Ace of Swords, this air energy, communication, seeing it for what it is. And of course, once we start to see it, we can step back. The outcome card, Seven of Pentacles. What does life look like? All of all of the above, but most of all, the outcome card is review. Most of all, it is going back. And it's, there's no accident when I opened up for this reading, I saw the cosmic egg. It's no accident that many people on many levels will be reviewing, going back and replanning, re-strategizing, going back to the drawing board one way or another. This is a time of review. Post-pandemic, it will be a time of review. The Sun card. Again, all my readings talk about what gets in the way of full illumination, what gets in the way of our happiness. What gets in the way of our happiness? Is the way that we lived before going to cut it? Or do we have to do things differently? And the Five of Cups, yeah. So I can't tell you when the pandemic is going to end because there's a lot of loss here and a lot of lessons. But life post-pandemic will not be the same. Will not be the same because we're reviewing. We're reviewing as a result of the lessons that we uh, that we, we learned. 
at the base of the, or we will learn, at the base of the pack, the King of Swords. So the King of Swords is somebody that <laughs> really does step forward with that, uh, the Sword of Truth. This is in our hopes position. Never, you know, never give up hope. Always have hope, even when it looks like, you know, it's unassailable. It's, you know, no way are we ever going to prosper and innovate and, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Never give up hope because that King of Swords is there and so is our star card, the hope card. What's in the hope position, hope and fear? That's why I know that leaders that do the wrong thing right now will not be around politically because they will either lose office or lose their campaigns or whatever. Um, okay, I've got my golden tarot out. Is there any last question here? Looks like we will learn from the pandemic. Okay. Will the countries that don't have access to vaccinations, of course the world, parts of the world are hoarding their vaccinations now, um, but the countries that need to be vaccinated, will we see, I think that's what's going to happen by the end of 2022. I think we're going to see a, a lot of populations, you know, that haven't access uh, in 2021 able to access Ten of Wands, so we've got uh, a long road, heavy road. It's hard work. Okay, well, countries that can't access vaccinations, will they be offered them? So we have the Six of Cups. This is our higher selves coming together. There's a lot of people that are helping. Um, celebrities, I think uh, Angelina Jolie, um, who I have no opinion either way. She got a million followers on Instagram straight away in order to try and run those appeals for uh, the women in Afghanistan. So coming together, our higher selves. Uh, the What's crossing it is uh, the toxicity. We don't want them in our country. You know, this is greed, this is avarice, this is selfishness, and it all needs to be transformed. So can our higher self come together to make sure that, you know, I've had my two vaccinations. What about someone in uh, a developing country? Have they? Do I? Can I just not look at this anymore? I don't need to really focus on this. We're not transforming anything if we're like that. The Ace of Wands is good. That's at the foundation. So, yes, there is a new order coming through now and it will be one that lifts others up because there's the inspiration, there's the motivation that I was talking about in my last reading. The Three of Wands, there has been already a reasonable amount of work or done. Um, but I also get this as supply lines as well. So those that are considering, even from this point of view, around can my prosperity be ensured? If we don't make sure the world has access to vaccines, most a lot of our uh, the, the goods that we take for granted come via the ships <laughs> from these developing countries. And it really is an indictment upon us to think, you know, we get out, we source our goods cheaply, particularly manufacturing, including our drugs, from these developing countries because the labour is cheap there. But I'm seeing we're still to get a lesson around supply lines and lack of supply. That's coming too. Four of coins. Four of coins. You know, insecurity... I'm okay, I don't need to share anything with anybody else. King of Swords. This were, this was in our past reading. There will be a leadership that comes together because I think we're, we've got a way to go yet. Even if 
you know, our countries are reasonably safe <laughs> from the pandemic, we need to look at other countries because it's like unless we bring them along, we're still going to be in this situation. The Knight of Wands, there is, I think, already a growing movement here. And the Ace of Cups, this is all at the base of the pack. New starts, new emotional starts. Why? Because we're in the tower. We're, we're, we're having to transform this energy. So it's like we're going to be dragged, the world as we know it, and going to be dragged screaming and kicking <laughs> toward transforming this devil energy one way or another as a result of the experiences that we go through. So there is, there is movement at the moment to try and address the, 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 the supply of vaccines into other countries. Watch out for it if you can help in any way. It's good karma, you know. What you give out, uh, you reap. What you sow, you reap. Um, and it's just good karma. So, um, and better still, it just transforms this energy. Don't be greedy. <laughs> All right, uh, that's my reading, The World Post-COVID. Uh, we've got a way to go and we've got those twos, lots of lessons, decisions, choices. Um, you can't check other people's behaviours, but you can check your own uh, for compassion and empathy. Um, okay, I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.